two or more gathered in my name, I am me. <laughs> Every day, you farted. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode. <laughs> Every day, Theologians, episode number two. two. As you can tell, our wives did not they write this for not. us. So if you guys think that we are exploiting our wives for any free labor, so that way we may magnify the name of the Lord, it's not happening. It's not uh, true. Everyday Theologians, we're back. We're back, we're back in action. If you don't know, if you didn't catch our first video, I'm Taylor, and my name's Josh. <laughs> cool, dude. And we'll link that video in the description. So check this out. Have you ever asked yourself, what does theology mean? Or have you ever been asked, what does theology mean? And you didn't know what to say? No, seriously, have you ever been asked what theology is? You are a theologian, you said. Like, seriously. Yes, but I gotta go to the bathroom first. Oh, can I go to the bathroom really quick? I'm begging you. Yes, fine! Oh, it's the bathroom! Systematic theology is the study of what the Bible teaches us on any given topic and how it applies to us. <sighs> yeah, I definitely asked you what theology was, not what systematic theology was. Oh, in that case. Theo. Theo means God. Ology. Ology means the study of. So theology means the study of God. So what do you think? What do you think? Oh, why didn't you just say that? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that was so bad. Ow! <laughs> So today we've got two important topics. Count them. One, two. Two topics to cover in this video. First one is why study theology. Boom! And the second one's gonna be So, why do we study theology? Obviously there are multiple reasons to study theology. A.W. Tozer once said, what you think about when you think about God, is the most important thing about you. Now think about that. Oh. <laughs> if we have wrong thoughts about who God is and how he has revealed himself to us, then we live our lives in a manner that is completely opposite of what he has in store for us of how we were meant to live. That's why he gave us the Bible, that's why he gave us scripture, so that we could learn and know what he says about who he is and about who we are. That's the first main reason. The second reason is this. If you're not familiar with what the Great Commission is, the Great Commission is what Jesus gave the responsibility to his disciples and to every other Christian who is going to follow. This is his <laughs> His name is Dissa. That's our disciple. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Not only that, there's another scripture here. In Acts 1.1, it says, the former account I made, this is Luke who wrote this, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Teaching. 
It's not important just to evangelize. We have to teach. We have to actually know what the word says. We can't just say, hey man, believe in Jesus because uh, I think you should. Okay, but why? Because I think you should. Okay, but why? Because like I said that you need to believe in Jesus. Okay, I'm not going to do that, okay? So essentially that's what will happen. Jesus was very big on teaching. You think of the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. You think of all the different parables he spoken. You yeah. think of the way that he taught everything to his disciples in private. He was a teacher. That's why they called him a good teacher, rabbi, all those things. Teaching, learning, education, theology. That's why it's important to know, to have knowledge. No. Knowledge. Knowledge. But it doesn't come with Lamborghinis. Side note. Here in my garage. Now here's what we're not saying. We are not saying that you have to become a pastor because we're talking about teaching. Teaching is not on the board. I thought it was. That's correct. That's correct. No, don't know. I don't know. God has called each and every one of us to something different with our career, with our interests, with our hobbies, and we can teach in smaller settings, one-on-one -on -one coffees. If somebody wants to know about who God is, you can teach them who God is because you know theology. As you can see by my artwork here, my beautiful artwork. I don't know how to teach. <laughs> so we see we have an eye, we have a nose, we have a deformed arm and a terrible ear. Why did I draw those things? I don't know. Are we speaking in hieroglyphics? Yes. No, we are not. No. First Corinthians 12 talks about how we are all part of one body. We are Christ's body. Now, if every single member was an eye, where would we be smelling? Okay, if everyone was a nose, where would we be hearing? Basically, if everybody was a pastor, who would be the person who works in the hospital who speaks to people there? Who would be the person at the bookstore or at the fast food restaurant who's able to speak to people there? Teaching and knowing theology is not just for pastors or people at the church because that is how the, the body of Christ becomes so incredibly weakened because nobody has knowledge of what God's word says, nobody knows what the Bible says, and then everybody relies on the teachers, and then the rest of the body goes out into the world and they don't know what they're talking about. And if you're relying, and if you're relying on just the teachers of the churches, and then everybody else in the congregation goes out to the rest of the world and they look like I did earlier about not knowing how to define theology, that's not at all what Jesus had in mind when he sent out everybody to go make disciples of all nations, okay? We have to know our stuff. We have to. Otherwise, I mean, we just look like fools. And that's not what an everyday theologian is. That we, Got ain't, it? we ain't fools. We're no, not. we are. Ah! Okay, so besides knowledge to be able to help teach and disciple people, we have three big ideas that helps to apply to our lives directly. So idea number one here is overcoming wrong ideas. Okay, a lot of us have wrong ideas about who God is. So if you think of God as a hateful and a vengeful and just wants to punish people kind of God, which a lot of people sadly do, that's, that's who they think God is. If that's all you know and that's all you think that God is, then you completely miss the grace and the mercy that he's given us, and you'll live your life in a way that is bitter and hate-filled. You will in turn become all of these things that you see God as being. Talking about the forgiveness of God and the grace of God. On the opposite side, if you all you look at is his love, his forgiveness, his grace, you will miss his justice. You will miss all the things that he came to save us from. He came to save us from our sin. You will start to say, my sin's okay. God's gonna forgive me anyway. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use Jesus as my get out of jail free card to be able to live my life however I want. You will also swing to the opposite side where you misunderstand God as this gracious God who is who never has any expectations, never calls you to live righteously, never calls you to obedience, which is completely wrong. So you can see we have to overcome our wrong ideas of the Bible. Studying systematic theology, I mean just theology in general, studying the Bible is going to help clear these wrong ideas. Able to make better decisions and then to become more mature. Ah! So besides teaching and helping disciple people and giving them knowledge of what scripture says as Jesus did, there is a second reason under why we study theology and that's to help apply to our lives. It helps us to grow as Christians. If 
Theology is just a lot of head knowledge and it's a lot of information that you end up knowing, but you don't grow and mature in your walk with Christ. It doesn't do you any good. All it does is puff you up. All it does is contribute to just pride. And it doesn't help you to live your life more according to what scripture is. God has called you. Mama, film me a video. The more we know about what God has revealed about himself, we're able to trust him more. We're able to more easily jump off that cliff to what he's called us to do. Uh, have that conversation with a stranger. Uh, serve in, in any capacity that you might not have thought you could have before because you have that confidence that you are a son or daughter of the king. Yeah. Bam. Happy Saturday. I love you. I forgive you. Bye-bye. Know God. Increase your maturity in God. Trust and obey God. Come on, guys. Oh.